Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Don Regal at Worldwide Mutual. Oh, sure, Don. Out in Chicago. Oh, no. Guess again. You've been moved? Yeah. Where? I hope it's been a promotion. Well, Johnny, I'm sitting here looking out the window of my office at the vast blue expanse of the mighty Pacific. Or at least I would be if the fog weren't so dark and thick this afternoon. San Francisco. Right. One of my favorite towns. <laughs> Go on. I'll bet you say that to every city in the United States. No, I mean it. I have some real fond memories. Oh, yeah? Who is she, Johnny? I mean memories of nice, big, fat fees. Uh-huh. You know, Don, every case I've handled in that fair city of yours over the years has paid me very nicely. How about this one, Don? Oh, uh, let's, uh, let's wait and see, huh? What's the problem? Man missing. Anybody I might know? Well, I doubt it. His name is Harvey Lehman. And, Johnny, I find we have the gentleman insured to the tune of exactly one quarter of a million dollars. Wow. Yeah. Okay, Don. I'm on my way. <laughs> CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer and the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company, San Francisco office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the buyer and the seller matter. <laughs> item one, after a quick early dinner, is six dollars for a cab out to Bradley Field, and item two, 175.70 plane fare. It was quite late by the time we sat down at San Francisco International Airport, so item three is another six bucks for a taxi into the Huntington Hotel, high on famous Knob Hill, where from my window I could look out over Telegraph Hill and Chinatown, Fisherman's Wharf, the Embarcadero, and other familiar spots of this wonderful, colorful city. First thing in the morning, I dropped in on Don Regal at his office right near station KCBS that carries these reports of mine on CBS Radio every week. You know, come to think of it, the last time I was in San Francisco, a couple of a minute KCBS helped me solve an important arson case. Yeah, I remember that one, Johnny. Uh, where are you staying this trip? Over at the Huntington, as usual. Well, I hope you didn't bother to unpack your bag. No, why? Well, you may have a little more traveling to do. <laughs> what do you think I did to get out here? Had my way, I'd stick around and enjoy this time of year for a little while. Well, no reason why you shouldn't. You can come back after you've cleared up this case for us. And believe me, I hope you can, Johnny. What's it all about, Dan? Well, as I told you on the phone, the man's name is Harvey Lehman. As I also told you, he's disappeared. And if somebody's knocked him off, you'll have to pay a nice hunk of insurance. Yeah, exactly $250,000. Mm. But if that man ever had an enemy, I'm crazy as a bedbug. Well, I've always suspected that. <laughs> Who's the beneficiary? His wife, Dora Slayman. They've been getting along all right? Mm, no, to be honest with you. Uh-oh, here we go again. Oh, no, wait a minute, Johnny. Don't start jumping to any fancy conclusions. Why not? That's a lot of money. Yeah, man. sure it is. But Harvey Lehman is only 48, 49. All right, so why we wait around for him to grow old and die before no, collecting no, on no, him? No, 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 Johnny. What I mean is that he has a good business going and will be worth a lot more over the years than any hunk of insurance is now. Even 250 Gs? Even that. Even if it means putting up with him... Over the years? Well, any putting up with it, Johnny, I'd say, is on his part. How do you mean? Well, Lehman's a real solid, hard-working citizen who's so, well, so completely straight and decent that, well, he, he's the sort that other folks often take advantage of, especially his wife. Yeah? Domineering. She's overpowering. Mm. And while he's working, she's spending, and not on him or his house, anything like that, mind you, but on her own selfish self. Well, then you've just opened up possibility number two. That he's disappeared deliberately to get away from her? Sure. Yeah, no. Why not? Well, he's simply not the type. And there's a, well, a, a stubborn streak in him, Johnny, and I'm sure he'd keep trying to make a go of it in the hope that she'd get over this extravagance and nagging one day, and... Well, I, I just don't think he'd give up. I know he wouldn't run away. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm sure of it. How long ago did he disappear? Um, by the way, what sort of business is he in? Well, he's a buyer, Johnny. I guess you'd call him a commission buyer. Oh, a buyer of what? Well, uh, antiques, that sort of thing. Mm. Hey, you want a giant ruby from some ancient Persian idol, layman would get it for you if anyone could, or, or the suit of armor that King Arthur wore, or, a, or even a whole room from some Scottish castle. You know that sort of thing. Uh -huh. Well, anyhow, he left here just a week ago. A week ago? Mm -hmm. Well, that means a pretty cold trail. Yeah, I know. He told his wife he was going down to Los Angeles, to Beverly Hills, to be exact, to see a man. 
told her he'd be back the following day. But he wasn't. Any reason why he couldn't have just stayed over for a while? Well, look, Johnny, if Lehman said he'd show up at 9.16 on Tuesday morning, he'd be there at 9.16 on Tuesday morning on the nose. Not a minute sooner, not a minute later. That kind. Yeah, that kind. Anyhow, Johnny, I've checked every hotel and apartment down there, so the police. There's been no sign of them. What about this man that he went to see? Well, his name is John Arthur Whittington Maynard. I've been on the phone with him. The police have been on the phone with him half a dozen times. Layman never showed up. Maynard, Maynard. John Arthur Whittington. Yeah, you remember him, Johnny. Big produced snake of a lot of big movies some 30 years ago. Well, at least they made a lot of money. Yeah. All of them horror films, Edgar Allan Poe and Vampire and Werewolf sort of stuff. Before mm -hmm. all this science fiction type of stuff came along. The old screwball made himself millions. Mm -hmm. Well, why did Layman say he was going down... Well, like I said, Lehman was a buyer of some pretty unusual stuff on, on commission. And I understand Maynard has a house full of it. Wait a minute now. Don, isn't he the one who had an old movie set, an old castle moved onto some property to use for a home? Yeah, that's the one. You've probably seen it in one of the picture magazines. But now, to get back to Lehman, uh, you better give me his description. Well, uh, let's see. Here's the show on him, Johnny, all scribbled out for you. Thanks. And if you want a picture without having to go to the police, his wife has promised to have one for you. Good, because she's the one person that I want to talk to about this. Now, have you got a car I can use? No, sure, you can have mine. But listen, Johnny, so far as Mrs. Lehman is concerned, I thought I made it clear a couple of minutes ago All right, that... Don, okay, let's just wait and see. The Lehman house was up in Marin County over the Golden Gate Bridge, and it was quite a mansion. From the minute I stepped inside, it was plain who dominated this household. The rugs, every piece of furniture, every bit of decoration, everything was in the unmistakable taste of a woman. Even Lehman's so-called study would have done much better as a stoning room. There was certainly no place where a man could open his collar, take off his shoes, put up his feet, and relax. And the more I talked with Doris Lehman, the more I became convinced that one of two things had happened. Either he, in spite of what Donna told me, either he'd skipped out simply to get away from her, or she had done him in for that insurance. Four cars left out in blank, or in unheated garages. Don't ask the trouble, ask for to bite, Xerox, and it please. Winter time is trouble time for many of us who leave our cars out at night or in unheated garages. So don't ask for trouble. Ask for DuPont Xerox Antifreeze. Xerox outlasts winter. It protects your car against sudden drops in temperature all winter long. It won't boil away even during a warm spell. And Xerox has an exclusive rust inhibitor, MR8, that protects all engine metals, including aluminum, against rust and corrosion. So for safe, dependable protection, do as millions of motorists have done for over 20 years. Ask for Xerox Antifreeze. It's made by DuPont. Remember, four cars left out at night or in unheated garages. Don't ask for trouble. Ask for to bite Xerox Antifreeze. Now, just a minute, young man. If you came out here to insult me... I'm sorry, Mrs. Lehman. You very well should be. But in my job, we have to consider all the possibilities. Ridiculous. Do you think for one minute I'd dirty my hands with such a low act as murder? It's ridiculous. Even for a quarter of a million? Make no mistake about it, Mr. Dollar. Harvey is worth a great deal more to me alive than he might ever be dead. He's done very well for me and will continue to. If you can find him and bring him back to me... I'm sure he will. Of course he will. Have you considered that he might have just wanted to get away from you for a while? I beg your pardon. Harvey, just run off and leave me? Well? He wouldn't dare. I wondered. Well, you can stop wondering right here and now. Harvey would no more... He would no more... Yes? Yeah. Go on, Mrs. Raymond, or about hit a sore spot. Mr. Dollar, if I thought for one minute... If it were possible that you were right. No. No, I refuse to believe it. And if you have no better theory, I suggest you get out of here and forget the whole thing. 
If he's to be found, the police can do it. Have they accomplished anything as yet? No. The talking, do-nothing men, they haven't accomplished a thing. And those bumbling, movie-struck police down there in Beverly Hills are just as bad. Now, just a minute. It just happens that Beverly Hills is a mighty fine police department. I know. I've worked with them. Then why haven't they found him? That's where Harvey went. Well, how do you know? How do you know that he ever got there? Because he telephoned me from Mr. Maynard's home. If you can call that atrocity a home. He said that's where he was calling from? The night of the morning he left here. Harvey always calls me when he gets to a destination, wherever it is. I insist on it. And naturally, Harvey obeys. I'm sure he does. Did you tell that to the police? Of course I... Yes? No. No, I guess... I was so confused. These stupid police annoy me so with their endless questions and insinuations. They're even worse than you are. Thank you very much. What? Don't you realize they're only trying to do a job for you? Then why don't they? Why don't they know that Harvey got there? Because you didn't tell them. Why did he go to see Mr. Maynard? To collect some money due for a lot of junk he bought for him. $10,000. Junk? Oh, chunks from some ancient Roman ruin. Artifacts out of the temple of some old pagan god. And a lot of other nonsense that castle is stuffed with. Maynard simply refused to pay. He told Harvey he should feel honored for having been able to contribute to the decoration of that silly place. And that if he didn't stop dunning him, he'd... He'd, he'd uh, what, Mrs. Lemon? Oh, I don't know. All I know is that he's threatened Harvey. And more than once. For simply trying to collect a bill? Well, you don't know that crazy old Maynard. Oh, I guess I don't. Anyhow, I got fed up with it. I told Harvey to go down there and collect that money or else. Why should I tell you this? I don't like you. It's none of your business. So just leave and forget about it. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. I was afraid if I lingered any longer, she'd literally throw me out. So I got the next bit of information, her telephone number from the phone book in my room at the Huntington. Then I put through a call, not to her, but to an old pal of mine. Under the circumstances, it wouldn't be uh, diplomatic to give his right name, so we'll just call him Brady. Sergeant Brady of the Beverly Hills Police Department. And 15 minutes later, he called me back. Johnny Dollar. Brady, Johnny. Yeah. Well, as you suggested, I snooped the phone company, and yes, there was a call to that Marin County number the same night Lehman should have arrived down here. All right, then, Brady. So maybe old Maynard called to see why he hadn't. He must have known Lehman was planning to come. I don't think so. I don't think Maynard would have called because I don't believe he did know Lehman was heading your way. Oh, you don't, huh? What's more, it was Lehman himself who made that call. No, wait a minute. Are you sure of that? Yes. At least that's what I was told by... Yeah, Johnny? Well, maybe I'm not sure. Well, if you're thinking that maybe Lehman did get here and that maybe they had a fight or something, well, Johnny, we thought of that, too. You see, we know that wacky old Maynard pretty well. He's a real nut. And if you don't believe me, just dig up some of those old horror pictures he used to make. Wow. <laughs> I know what you mean. Made a lot of the props for him, too, with his own little hands. Anyhow, just in case, some of the boys and I went through that joint of his from stem to stern. And? Nothing. Zero. No sign of Lehman or anybody else. We even tapped on walls and took measurements, looking for hidden rooms or secret panels, that sort of thing. Nothing. But you did suspect him. Did? Yeah. But only because that crazy old man, just to be dramatic, might try most anything, just for kicks. Even murder? Murder. So what's a murder to him? I mean, after all those he put on film... But you know something? No. If that ham ever did kill somebody, why, Johnny, he'd be the first one to ask us over. He'd probably lead us right to where he'd hidden the stiff after fixing it so we wouldn't see it. Just to show off? Yeah, sure. That's why we went over the place so carefully. Even poked around in all the old suits of armor that he kept pointing out to us. Brady, how long are you going to be on duty? Well, I'm off in half an hour, but now listen, Johnny, if you think you have some well, ideas... Well, I'm not sure, but maybe I'll run on down then. If so, I'll holler. Yeah, you do that. Item three, $83 even for a cab to the airport, a jet to Los Angeles, and a deposit on a rental car. I drove into Beverly Hills to police headquarters. As I suspected, Brady wasn't there, nor did a phone call raise him at his home. However, the officer on the desk promised to keep trying and gave me some directions, so I took off. 
After leaving a pleasant residential section, I took a narrow dirt road high up the side of a mountain. I could see all of Beverly Hills and most of Los Angeles spread out below me, and Catalina Island over 20 miles out in the blue Pacific like a jewel, fairly sparkling in the late afternoon sun. I could also see the crummy castle where John Arthur Whittington Maynard lived alone among the tattered glories of his past in the film business. And suddenly, that wee small voice in the back of my brain spoke out loud and clear. Watch it, Dollar. You may be getting into more than you bargained for, so watch it, Dollar. Watch it. In thousands of communities throughout the nation, this is the time of year when we strive to help our less fortunate neighbors. Not that we don't try to help all year round, it's just that now many health, recreation, and welfare agencies band together in a common fundraising campaign. When you give just once to your United Fund or community chest, you help many people in your city, the sick, the needy, the aged, the serviceman, and veteran. So give the United Way, and please give generously. Picture it for yourself. This castle, once a movie set, built up among the rocks and boulders at the top of a mountain. Complete with gray stone walls, battlements, a gallery between the towers, and believe it or not, even a moat with a heavy wooden drawbridge. I almost expected to see the bridge thump down and a half a dozen fully armored knights come galloping out to challenge me with lances at the ready. Instead, as I drew up in front of it, the bridge was lowered slowly. There was something almost ominous about the creaking and clanking of its iron chains. And then standing there, the man, or rather the caricature of a man. It was short, heavy set, and in a way almost grotesque. The ugly face, the, the eyes of a pig, the long, black, straggly hair and three or four day growth of beard, the heavy, beefy shoulders hunched forward. I thought of Quasimodo, the horrible hunchback of Notre Dame. Welcome, sir. Welcome to my castle. Oh, how do you do, uh, Mr. Maynard, is it? That's right. Surely you heard of me. As a matter of fact... Come in, come in. It's, it's not often I have visitors, someone to show my place to. And so few people even know of my beautiful castle. My name is Dollar, Mr. Maynard. I'm an insurance investigator. Insurance? Not a salesman. I'll have none of it. Get out. Leave my place. No, I said I was an investigator, Mr. Maynard. Huh? I'm trying to find oh, out what oh. happened to a Mr. Harvey Lehman. Harvey? Oh, yes, yes, of course. A very old and very dear friend of mine. Come. Let me show you some of the wonderful things he has brought me over the years. Well, I would like to ask... Magnificent suits of armor, regal pendants and banners, beautiful tapestries. Pinning him down to talk about Harvey Lehman was almost impossible. But I must confess that the trip around that phony castle was interesting, to say the least. Much of what he showed me deserved a place in a museum real collector's items. And some of the props from old horror pictures that he made were, were just fascinating. Especially down in one of the dank, dark, dirty dungeons. Ancient instruments of torture, the rack, the wheel, the Iron Maiden, a metal boot to be filled with boiling oil. From my pictures, Dollar. From my pictures. The realism, that's what I had in, in all of them because I was the greatest plotter of them all. And when it came to mystery and torture and murder... Uh, and, to get back to Mr. Lehman. And can you think of a better place to keep them than down here in this dusty old dungeon, eh? Yes, very fitting. Now, 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 I mean, here. I must show you my, my wine cellar. Uh, there are still a couple of questions, though, that I... Twenty-nine years ago, I laid down the wines in here. That's all. All that time they've been aging in here. Cases and cases of them, rack after rack. Do you see them under the dust and cobwebs? Finest vintages of all. Yes, all sure. Them. Now, Mr. Maynard... Yes, 29 years ago, when I retired and moved into this place, I, I put these wines down here. So you said. You can tell how long by the dust and the cobwebs. Yes, I know. Spiders. They're undisturbed for 
29 years. Well, one thing more, though, about Mr. Lehman. No, no, I, I told you, Mr. Dollar. I, I know nothing, nothing whatsoever about him. When did you see him last? Oh, almost a year ago. You sure about that? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Oh, look. Look here, this case of port. No label. But the, 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 the finest vintage port. Uh, Mr. Menon? Over here, here. And do, you, do you see them? The, the cherries. Magnificent cherries. And, and the longer they lie there, oh, undisturbed, the, the finer they'll be. You never drink them? Hmm? Drink them? Such treasures. Oh, oh, oh. Drink them indeed. Look at this one. The color of this ancient sherry. Hold it up to the light. There. You see? Yes, I'm afraid I do now. <laughs> what? I see. Realism, you said. Didn't you mean what looks like realism? Uh, By the time it was shown on a movie screen? I, I, I don't understand, Mr. Dollar. Tell me the truth, Mr. Maynard. <laughs> These torture machines, for instance, in the other room, and some of that armor upstairs. Well, some of that armor cost me a fortune because it's, it's genuine. Well, maybe so, some of it. But how about the rest? You mean... You mean you could tell? That it's only imitation? Stuff that was made up for some of your old movies? But I made it myself. I, I have a skill in such things. I thought it was perfect. It would have fooled me, all right. Well, then I, I don't understand. Even as the dust down here and the cobwebs fooled the police, too, didn't they? Hmm? What? What? When they came around here a few days ago for a look. Now, just a minute. Now, that's by way of showing off. You dragged them down to this wine cellar, too. You were so sure of yourself. Dollar. These phony cobwebs are almost like the real thing. Phony? All the dust. What is it, man? It's full of earth that you've scattered around? You don't know what you're talking about. The whole setup would have fooled me royally if you hadn't picked up that bottle of wine and held it up to light. I'm going to take a look under some of these cases, Mr. No! You leave them alone! Why? Because they cover up something you don't want me to see? No, 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 don't do that. What was the name of that gruesome old picture in which you had a man buried under a cellar floor? I said stop it! If you don't, I'll, I'll pull this trigger! Oh, I see. Yeah. That wild, silly guess of mine paid off. That's right. Harvey Lehman is, is, is buried under your feet, and you will join him there. Now, put down that gun, Mr. Maynard. Stand back, Dollar. You heard him, Maynard. What? Put it down. The police. I'll kill you. Watch I'll... him, Brady. Thanks, Brady. Well, it was a pleasure, Johnny. I'm sure glad you left word for me at headquarters. Oh, believe me, so am I. And he certainly fooled us when the boys and I went through here a couple of days ago. But how did you ever guess? A bottle of wine when he held it up to the light? Well? He said it was fine old sherry, lying around down here for 29 years. So? Sherry? There should have been a sediment in that bottle this thick. Uh-huh. So the age and dust and cobwebs were a fake, huh? And he must have moved the bottles over this spot only recently. That's right. I just took a wild guess. <laughs> you know the rest. Pretty smart, Johnny. Pretty smart. Needless to say, wild as the whole thing may seem, they found Lehman's body buried there in the summer. Expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford by way of San Francisco to pick up my clothes, four seventy-seven thirty. Yours truly. Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, Savannah, Georgia. After one of the cleverest crooks I've ever had to tangle with. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zarato Jr., music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Leon Janney as Maynard, Gertrude Warner as Doris Lehman, 
William Redfield as Brady, and Carl Frank as Don Regal. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hannah speaking. Don't just stand there. Enjoy the Gary Moore Show weekdays on the CBS radio network.